Imagine there is no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for, and no religion too. Imagine all the people living life in peace. You say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. The quoted verses are lyrics to a song called Imagine. The author of the song was a well-known musician, songwriter, and artist. Um, while back, I visited a website. It's called songmeanings.com. It basically states the connotations of lyrics. There is also a comment section, comment section for feedback or a post that people can visit the website and you can uh, quote uh, what you think the song means. And I will quote you a couple of feedback comments regarding the song Imagine. So here is one person who quoted what he thinks uh, the song meant. Quote, this song to me has always meant one thing. We can bring heaven unto earth. The same can be done with hell. It's our choice which afterlife we choose. What this artist talks about in this song is if there were no religion, then perhaps the whole world can have heaven here. I didn't say this. This is someone who quoted that on the uh, website. And here's another person who quoted what, what the song meant to them. This artist, quote unquote, sings of peace and having a God has nothing to do with peace. You cannot prove the existence of God. And even if you could, you could definitely not prove that he plays any role in our world. Obviously, if God was all-knowing, omnibenevolent, and omnipotent, as most religions claim he is, then there would be no suffering in the world for good people. But suffering does happen to many people that are good. So this kind of God does not exist, and possibly none does. At least not one that does anything but perhaps observe us. But we have something that God gave us that can really take it to a different opposite direction. Now I will focus on the lyric portion that the artist quotes, imagine there's no he heaven, it's easy if you try. So please turn with me to the very beginning, Genesis 1. We've been there many times and we'll continue to do so. It reads, Genesis 1, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, in the International Standard Version, it says, In the beginning, God created the universe. It's interesting that the ISV says universe, noting that the word heavens is plural and be, being referred to the entire universe. Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown's commentary states regarding this, the heaven and the earth in Genesis 1.1, quote, the heaven and the earth, the universe. The first verse is a general introduction to the inspired volume, declaring the great and important truth that all things had a beginning, that nothing, nothing throughout the wide extent of nature existed from eternity originated by chance or from the skill of any inferior agent, but that the whole universe was produced by the creative power of God. And this is also confirmed in Acts, you can write this down, Acts 17, verse 24, and Romans 11, 36. Now, while scientists tell us the beginning of the universe began with a big bang, quote unquote, the Bible tells us, just as stated as Genesis 1-1, something completely different. Now here's a quote taken from the website 
BigBangTheory.com. Not the TV show, the scientific uh, website, BigBangTheory.com. Quote, the Big Bang Theory is an effort to explain what happened at the very beginning of our universe. Discoveries in astronomy and physics have shown beyond the reasonable doubt that our universe did in fact have a beginning. Prior to that moment, there was nothing. During and after that moment, there was something. Our universe. The Big Bang Theory is an effort to explain what happened during and after that moment. Now, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but how can something be created out of nothing? If you have a box of Legos and you take it apart and you put it on a table or on the floor and you say, build, it's not going to build. It needs to be created. Um, will it create itself at a, on the spot? form of a spaceship or car or truck? How about building a house? If the lumber and roofing materials and all the materials required to build a house is just laid out in your property, will it magically build itself? So we need a creator, a builder. It needs to be in the formula to achieve the final product. According to the standard theory, going back to BigBangTheory.com, according to the standard theory, our universe sprang into existence as singularity, quote unquote, around 13.7 billion years ago. What is a singularity and where does it come from? Well, to be honest, we don't know. Singularities are zones which defy our current understanding of physics. They are thought to exist at the core of black holes. Black holes are areas of intense gravitational pressure. The pressure is thought to be so intense that finite matter is actually squished into infinite density, a mathematical concept which truly boggles the mind. These zones of infinite density are called singularities. Our universe is thought to have begun as an infinitesimally small, infinitely hot, infinitely dense something, a singularity. But where did it come from? We don't know. Why did it appear? We don't know. There's a lot of we don't knows, isn't there? But we know God created all things. Even the Apostle Paul knew that. Please turn with me to Colossians 1. Verse 16, Colossians 1, verse 16, Paul states, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things all things were created through him and for him. And in Isaiah, which I will read for you, Isaiah 45, verse 12, the International Standard Version reads, which complements Colossians 1 16, for in verse 12 here, it says, I myself made the earth and personally created humankind upon it. My own hands stretched out the skies. I marshaled all their star starry hosts. And the Church of the Eternal God's booklets, God is a Family, and Do You Know the Jesus of the Bible, goes into much more detail regarding God the Father who made the universe and all things through Jesus Christ. That's the important thing, through Jesus Christ. So they both created everything. And also in Job 38, let's look at what God told Job about creation. Please turn with me to Job 38, verses 1 through 7. Job 38, 1 through 7. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, and said, 
Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself. Now he's really giving it to Job here. Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fashioned? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So God states his case to Job in chapters 39, 40, and 41 of Job regarding creation and that God is in charge and he is the omnipotent creator. That's the title. Certain, I got the inspiration for that with Job, the omnipotent creator, creator. Case closed. And for the last scripture, please turn with me to Matthew 8. 26 and 27 Matthew 8 verse 26 and 27 <clears throat> but he said to them why are you fearful O you of little faith then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea and there was a great calm Brethren, God even controls the weather, and all of mankind will learn this one day. Brethren, in our calling, we are blessed with the truth to know that God is really in control and the creator of all things. We need to equip ourselves with the armor of God, specifically the sword, the Bible, our foundation, now here regarding the truth about creation. In the world tomorrow, the existence of God and Jesus Christ will be known in all the world. No more wrong conceptions of this world's devices and philosophies. In the religions of this world now, there is illiteracy, poverty, degeneration, misery, suffering, despair, in general unhappiness. None of them has produced a happy world. They have spawned communal wars, hatreds, and violence. In the world tomorrow, there will be no more religions, religious confusion, because it will be the omnipotent creator, God's government with Jesus Christ on earth. <clears throat>